One more time, because Ren's way better at it. Alright, here you go. Welcome to the behind the scenes for Portal Trick Shots. Sorry, welcome to the visual effects breakdown for Portal Trick Shots. It's about time we did one of these. So, we're going to tell you guys a little bit about the inspiration behind this, all the challenges we have to do in terms of putting it together, and all the crazy math that Ren had to do in his head to make all the basketball trajectories look accurate. It wasn't in my head, it was on paper. Yeah, this was one of the most challenging videos I've ever had to like conceptualize because there are so many aspects that go into making a portal, like what is the perspective if you're to look through this portal? So it's like, okay, if you attach a camera and to a rod to the portal and flip that portal to the other portal, that would be where the camera would be. And you have to like think about, okay, where would the camera be to get a plate to put on the other side? Yeah, anyway. Yeah, we actually used the uh, drone, the DJI Inspire to get a lot of the plates because the portal will be high up on like the ceiling or the underside of the uh, highway and so we need to get perspective from there looking down at you know, me and Sam doing our thing. It's like how do we get a 40 foot ladder? Hmm. <laughs> well we have a drone that's pretty stable up in the air. Let's use that. Just point the camera down. And So we went on a street. We couldn't fly underneath the overpass because the bridge blocked all the GPS data to the drone so it was flying all over. Couldn't keep it steady. So we just filmed on another street and kind of comped it in to make it look like that street. Stabilized it just a tad bit. You don't need to stabilize it much. The shots elevate in complexity as they go on. Uh, one of my favorites is probably where uh, Sam throws the basketball to himself, runs through a portal with the camera following him, and then proceeds to catch the basketball and make the shot. We had a green screen with a hole cut out of it where the portal would be, and some tracking markers. And we just, and that was already in our second location, so we jumped through that, caught the basketball, and made the shot. Basically, all we did is track in the pillar uh, holding up the highway and the ground and some of the background there. And it all looks photo real because it's just a picture that's on screen for a moment. It's and a picture that's sliced up into different spots. Like there's a background photo, there's the pillar, there's the little small pillars in front. It's all from the same photo, but separated in three dimensional space so that when the camera goes through it, they all move at different speeds, making it look like it's an actual real pass through. Yeah, everyone was saying, like, there's one effect we haven't seen in portal videos that's taking the camera through a portal. So we had to do it. So part of what sells a lot of these shots is the fact that there is motion involved. The camera is actually moving through these scenes, and to do that we have to motion track the entire shot, what's called match moving. And to do that we used a program called Buju to 3D track all these shots. So all the elements in the scene are actually in their actual spot, as if they are in the video in real life. So for simplicity's sake, a couple of these shots, uh, the beginning of them were actually filmed on a tripod. And that was just so that we can get the entire shot all in one frame, and then we can actually move the camera on the second half of the shot and track the tripod part of the effect into the motion shot. And it all blends together really nicely. In my opinion, the most crucial part of recreating a real life portal effect is showing what you would actually see on the other side of those portals. For example, if I was to take the basketball hoop plate from the drone and actually attach it to where the portal is, you would see instantly that it is not right. So what you do is you film these other plates on a tripod or stabilize it somehow, even use a still frame from that perspective. That's why in After Effects you position it so that it's actually way behind the pillar and only visible through that portal using what's called a track map. And so that way when the camera is actually moving through the scene, you get the proper parallax of the background that you would actually get if you were to be looking at the background through a portal. Now in the last shot, um, we set up an infinite loop and I'm flying through the infinite loop. I took my jacket off because after that there's a CG double that comes flying out the portal and slam dunks and do the cloth simulations for the jacket. While cool, uh, would have taken a lot of time, so that's why I throw my jacket on the ground. And Literally, the entire reason why Nico took his jacket off was because we didn't want to have to simulate it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So he scanned me in using a Kinect to make a 3D model, and then uh, just did basic ragdolls uh, that are built into 3ds Max. When it comes to physics, you can't tell like you can't tell the program like I want to I want to hit the basketball hoop. I want to be in a slam dunk position when I hit the basketball hoop. Physics don't work that way. You set your initial state and you hit simulate. And so I had a little <laughs> catapult that would launch my character. So I launched it once, and it went too high, and it went to the left. So I screwed myself right, and slowed it down. I launched again, I went too slow, and did that over and over until I just happened to hit the right motion, just have my guy like slam into the basketball hoop and go fine. And for the basketball hoop actually moving like that, we recorded a plate. I had actually like jumped up, grabbed the hoop, and I just pulled it down until it fell over. I ended up cutting my finger doing that too. 
I didn't uh, know that. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a scar now. Oh, wow. So that's an actual real element, and just composite me out of it and have Nico hitting it, and hopefully with the basketball goal being actually real and Nico's CG stunt double, the combination of the two will actually look a little bit more convincing than just having it hit the backboard and the backboard not actually do anything. Yeah, it's great to always get some real-life interaction. Ever since, for example, Frozen Crossing 1, when the jets fly by and they cause the branch to shake and like shake snow off, it's always like, get a little bit of that real-life interaction. It goes a long way. If you actually go back and look at all those equations on that whiteboard, they're not totally relevant, but they're slightly relevant <laughs> to maybe at least the portal gun or aspects of, you know, portal science. Yeah, Ren studied physics in college, so... I have a mechanical engineering degree. You decided to write out legit formulas <laughs> on the board. Sam and I were sitting there for like half an hour waiting for him to finish. Just like, yeah, what are you doing? I felt bad, like, trust me. Like, this, is, this, is, this is a real thing. Some people are going to appreciate this. I mean, as real as you can get with, you know, hypothetical science fiction stuff. At one point I actually figured out the terminal velocity of a basketball from the underside of the bridge. And I figured out it was about two times per second that it would be coming through. So at a BPM of about 120, it would be like thump, 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 thump. But we ended up scratching that shot before we started shooting, so. And now we have Nico flying instead, so I've got to figure that out now. <laughs> Isn't it like 170 miles an hour for a human? It's, I mean, it's 270 miles It's 120. 120. If, if you're like normally splayed out. If you're going to a dive, then it'd go up to like 180, I bet. Oh, you guys wondering how I made the portals themselves? Real quick, Ren, 10 second portal breakdown, go. Action essentials, lay out a few fire elements, pre-comp that, and then throw on polar coordinates, wrap it into a circle, and stretch it out into a portal. And then you have like some fire going this way and some fire going on the opposite way as well. A little bit of balloon, a little bit of glow, a little touch of optical flares getting the dirty lens effect. Use that as a displacement map source and get like those little rips going in there. Looks good. All right. Thanks for watching guys, hope you liked this little insight into how we did the effects for our portal trick shots and you guys stay tuned for some more sweet videos coming on our channel in 2015. Alright.